Welcome back to the Joy of Development. In the previous episode, we connected all of the doors in our room with a series of paths. In this episode, we'll be filling in patches of tiles to give the room more volume. Then next time in the following video, we'll be filling in all of our walls and this method will be complete. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash that like button. So we'll be starting off this video with a new function that I've named Nucleation. We'll plug that into our sequence and then jump inside. The first thing we do here is check the floor to see if we've already placed enough tiles or not. To do this, I've created a macro that will return a minimum number of tiles that still need to be placed. First, we multiply room tiles x by room tiles y to get our total area. Then we have a float value between 0 and 1 that we can use as a percentage. We'll multiply our room percentage by the total area. We'll round that number to convert it back to an integer. Then from that, we'll subtract the length of our place tiles array. Back in our nucleation function, we check to see if that number is greater than 0. If it is, we continue on with our nucleation function. If it's not, we've already placed enough tiles and we don't need to continue placing anymore. We have a local variable in our function called nucleation site. This is a tile transform that we randomly set to one of our unplaced floor tiles. After setting that variable, we're going to move on to a for loop with break. This will run from 0 to our max room dimension divided by 2. Next, we go into another for loop, with this one running from 0 to the previous index squared. Now we'll use the same math that we used to establish our initial grid. Dividing the index by the previous index to get our row. Then modulo the index by the previous index to get its column. Now we'll add the row value to our nucleation site's x location. And we'll add the column value to the nucleation site's y location. We'll make an in vector from those two values. And we'll check to see if it's contained with an unplaced floor. If it is, we'll add it to a local variable tile transform array that I've made called toPlace. Make sure to use add unique here as we don't want any duplicates. If the tile we're checking isn't contained in unplaced floors, check to see if it's contained in placed floors. If it is, we want to set our local boolean variable joined to true. When the loop is complete, we'll check to see if joined is true or not. If it is true, we can break the previous loop as well. If not, we don't do anything and we let the previous loop keep running. When the previous loop finishes, we check one more time to see if joined is true. If it's not, we'll simply retry the nucleation. If joined is true, we'll run a for each loop off of our two place tile array. For each of those tiles, we'll add an instance, we'll add it to our placed floors array, and we'll remove it from our unplaced floors array. After that, I check the remaining tiles one more time, and if it's still above zero, I'll rerun the nucleation. That said, since we checked this at the beginning, you could just run the nucleation. This function will then run recursively until your room has reached the minimum number of floor tiles. Now let's preview the game and see how it turned out. As you can see, the room's a lot more filled in now, and it has a much more unique shape. If things are filling in too much or too little, all you have to do is try adjusting your floor percentage variable. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them or join the Discord server. I'm happy to help as much as I can. We'll be finishing up this method in the next video when we fill in our walls, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out.